What's up, beautiful hello, people? Hello. <laughs> Hi, Arthurin. Hi, my love, Steve husband. How's everybody doing? It's another fantastic Wednesday. We're getting ready for a weekly, daily Wednesday. It's a, there's a connection there. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it does sound frightening. So prepare to sit back, relax, put your adults in their upright position. Let's talk about Linux. Yes. Yeah, lots of stories today. <laughs> it's not the biggest show we've ever done. No. <laughs> Oh, looks like we're having trouble connecting. Good timing there, Discord. Nailed it. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's good thing we've got Twitch chat. Yeah, Twitch chat is... Um... <laughs> yeah, Discord has just been... Discord ate Arr. poop. Yeah, it did. Hang on, watch this. <laughs> um... Explode! It did. Yeah, it, it exploded. Oh. <laughs> pig. <laughs> no. <laughs> that pig thing. <laughs> there we go. It's not perfect, but it's better than Discord, right? Yeah, no, that's Discord's uh, not so subtle way of reminding us. It's like, oh yeah, people are paying for their servers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah there's always like the um super fun like oh look poof <laughs> and then you look at the other servers it's like huh <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's this card i was checking the phone too it's down we're okay. good, Arthur, and clearly, uh, you, uh, didn't have enough, uh, yesterday. You came back for more, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, uh, for, uh, those of you watching right now that didn't watch yesterday's stream, yes, Arthur joined me because, uh, well, he bought me the GPU that was in the Steam box. So, uh, yeah, he got to come on stream and talk about it with me. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen, pay to play. <laughs> You don't actually need to pay to play. It's just that, yeah, for, for that one, I I had to. <laughs> pay to play. <laughs> oh, no, uh, you, you know those games that you buy up front and that's it? You know, like you used to? Mm -hmm. Nowadays, they're called premium games. Uh... Well, I mean, ultimately, I think at the end of the day, what we have to thank EA for killing the loot crate with the Star Wars. <laughs> they yeah. they actually were the ones to, mm -hmm. you know, get a they little too close up that yeah, hill, a little too close to the sun right on the that electronic side. arts. And they're like, oh yeah, now people are starting to look at it as a legitimate gambling mechanic and an issue. Mm, oops. <laughs> Surprise mechanics. <laughs> but I will say this, one of the benefits of um, playing games on Linux, by the time um, Shadow of War... That's the second one, right? Yeah, um, the one that just works with Proton. <laughs> right. And by the time we get around to playing that, all of the um, loot crate and pay-to-win stuff was ripped out of it. Yep. I know. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do remember when um, Mankind Divided came out, there were a lot of people saying, now there's a AAA game with microtransactions on Linux. It's like, I see what's your point, but that's a good thing. <laughs> Feral just needs to uh, do a Vulcan render for that game like they did for uh, Tomb Raider. <laughs> I wish they would. Yeah. I don't expect them to, but that'd be really cool. Just do a beta. Just uh, have a beta branch, because I'm guessing that's why uh, Mad Max Vulcan never became, like, the gold thing. Mm -hmm. You just have to always opt into the beta. Do that. Well, they wanted to learn. They had to do their experience, because I remember way back, this was before, like, Proton even, um came out, they, they had to cut their teeth on Vulcan because they were clearly getting ready to start doing switchboards. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, well, it's a good place to learn. 
But, you know, their lead Vulcan person left to go work for uh, Sony, was it? I think it was, it was one of the consoles, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't believe it was Atari. <laughs> Still have to uh, see that come out. They have a lot of pictures of prototypes, supposedly. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Hey, do you, do you know... <laughs> Very spe- low return. Speaking of vaporware, where's our Smash 3? I thought that was supposed to be out the first month of 2020 after being pushed back four times. Smash 3? Smash Z? Oh, yes. Hey. <laughs> That, wasn't that quarter one? Possibly. Yeah. We got until the end of March to be quarter one, so... Uh. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and laugh on the internet. And uh, if any of you... Um, can get Discord's attention on Twitter and say, yo, what the heck? <laughs> Point him at the stream. <laughs> Good luck with that. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> Four minutes, 20 seconds to go time, kids. Yes. I'm good. I uh, Part of the reason why I was late to the pre-show is because, uh, yes. <laughs> I was doing bathroom things. I thought you were wrestling. I... <laughs> Oh, bad timing on that one, Arthur. What? <laughs> Just as she got up. <laughs> oh. He can still want to believe, man. All right. Maybe. <laughs> Yay, server's back. At least on the web client. There it goes. Okay, might be a while for it hits the UK. Nah, man, give it another hour. It'll be... Boom. Great timing, though, I mean... (laughs) Control R to reload Discord. Well, it is Chromium, so yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, still saying temporarily unavailable. That's right. <laughs> Too edgy for Britannia, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Can't handle all the mad fire being spat. Pity wise, the. Alleged rumors of your death that I was unaware of uh, were completely unfounded. Yay. Hello. (laughs) Okay, it made it to Australia, but not the UK. (laughs) Brexit, man. (laughs) Ah, there we go. Oh yeah, I did see that one. It's like What's all that? the RPG books. I'm pretty sure uh, Jordan was foaming at the mouth for three, possibly four seconds until he bought it. <laughs> no coronavirus in the sewer. Again. I don't know. You really got to think like 
It's been a minute since, like, humanity suffered a devastating plague. I mean, unless you watch movies, because, you know, they're, they're on top of it. <laughs> Every other one, you mean? Yeah. Because <laughs> talk about an easy to write script. Oh, look, plague. What does the plague cause? Spin the wheel. Ooh, zombies. Okay, zombies. why not? Right. <laughs> Keeps landing on that. It was, um, uh, no, it's the anime, uh, <clears throat> series, because for some reason, Netflix just got a bunch of new anime, uh, series. Well, some new, some old, but new to Netflix. Anything worth watching? Um, high school DXD isn't bad if you get, get past all the fan service. Considering I know um, nothing about it. Uh, yes, it, it, it's, uh, vampires in high school. Pass. <laughs> Uh, let's see. There was another one. Um, I remember, I the, didn't they already do vampires control. in high school? What was it called? Rain? <laughs> uh, there, uh, it's Japan. There, there's a lot of vampires in high school, apparently. <laughs> um, ah, God damn it. I can't oh. remember the, um, the name of the one I watched recently. So they got the first season there yet. It's about um, a kid who gets uh, accused of uh, murdering his entire um, class. And he gets sent to a maximum security prison. Ooh, that's a little close to him. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as it turns out, he is infected with some weird virus of a catastrophe that happened uh, where the prison was built. Jill, a long, you can just hold ago. it up to the camera, my man. Yeah. You don't have to okay. wait for a special presentation while we're talking. No. Why you, gonna interrupt? <laughs> you don't have to. You just so, like hold it up. Be like, look, you can read unless you don't believe our theorem can read. Do you not think our theorem can read? Is that what you're yeah. writing on, Joe? Is that what you're yes. implying? Yes, yes our theorem. So, yeah, to celebrate scale this month, I will be using my scale mugs. <laughs> that was the one she pulled out of the cabinet this morning. But I like, I like, I like your new version. Like this was. <laughs> and this is a uh, you know one of their sponsors, of course, is Google. <laughs> As you were you saying, have a sponsored Pedro. mug. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mine's sponsored by whoever made the tea. Speaking of, we need to get a refill. And we need to do a show. Yes. And um, Josh Walworth, you're not watching right now, but uh, McEwen's <laughs> champion. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so poor Steve Husband can't join in. He doesn't have a Twitch account. <laughs> <laughs> and we we never set up his IRC password <laughs> to do that. <laughs> to do that, I keep forgetting. <laughs> See, it's been so long since he's used IRC. Is the Twitch app, uh, Discord app, did it come up again? Uh, let me see. <laughs> Yeah, IRC. I, I would have trouble remembering my IRC uh, password at this point mm. because it's been that long. <laughs> yep. Still down. Yeah, I'm. I'm still using it a lot because I also use um, IRC at Jupiter Broadcasting and some of the other podcasts. They're still using IRC, so I've mm -hmm. I use the same password for all you know, Freenode and Geekshed and all the different servers. <laughs> so I'm still using it, so I remember it. <laughs> yeah, I know Raspberry, but um, th this is before I actually started using any kind of password manager with any regularity. That's how long I've had that account. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's Raspberry Bird. It's just Steve Husband didn't want another account. That's all. <laughs> I can relate to that. Yeah. Just because, oh, uh, if you want to report a bug, you need to create a, an account on this other website. Mm -hmm. um, how about Launchpad or uh, what's the um, Red Hat one called? I forget. <laughs> I'm forgetting too. Yes. Bugzilla. <laughs> Bugzilla. Bugzilla. <laughs> uh, Launchpad, Bugzilla, GitHub, GitLab. Come on. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I remember trying to report uh, bugs uh, for the FGLRX drivers back in the day. Going to AMD zone like proto bugzilla type of thing that they had going on and creating a thread and no close won't fix uh, didn't provide enough info it's like eh, okay what info do you want because i looked and it doesn't say anywhere so am i supposed to just walk in here and divine my way into knowing what you need <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, it's been a long time since I posted a bug on Bugzilla, but I have done that years ago. The notes start here. And we have these links. They, they finally shipped that um, control surface that I ordered like two weeks ago. Oh. Yesterday. <laughs> Took him a while. <laughs> Took a minute. <laughs> Pro tip, buying, buying equipment from a recording studio, you're going to be dealing with musicians. They need to be reminded sometimes. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, we didn't do that yet? Oops. That was frighteningly close to the response I got. Back. Like, oh, right. No malice. Which yep. I fully expected because almost verbatim was yeah it took a week to get here but they finally shipped it and it showed up well but it was packaged in a blanket so i'm looking uh. forward to my free blanket uh. <laughs> zoom and dehance a rotten buck ah great drink <laughs> Come on, I want somebody at 3 p.m. at work to be like, I'm having a Miller Lite. What are you doing? <laughs> Bus driver. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, someone brought that up at the last uh, IT team meeting. So it's like anything uh, you guys would like is like, yes, uh, alcohol. <laughs> we work for the NHS. We can't do that. All right. Uh, marijuana. No, can't do that either. Dang it! <laughs> Pennywise, you did a very good job of packaging, yeah. but the post office did a better job of managing to package that package inside the P.O. box. It's like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you had to open the package to get enough grip to get it out. <laughs> Tastes like white wine. Ugh. I mean, if there's no other alcohol, I guess, right? <laughs> White wine is possibly one of the very few kinds of wine that my stomach doesn't automatically reject. Mm. <laughs> Red wine, I'm done with. Um, the problem, it's like same same issue I have with the Campagan. It's, it's like too sweet. I know I'll get like the, I guess, the headache, whatever that feeling is. Mm -hmm. If because I I'm the I'm not like ah sugar bad. I just don't consume processed sugar regularly, so mm -hmm. my body doesn't tolerate it very well. Mm. Unlike Jill. A sugar crash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't do well with and caffeine. That's the one that kills beverages, me. <laughs> hot beverages. Hot um, beverages. Mead. Like proper. Oh, yeah, yeah. Honey water. Mead. I like honey water. Warm. <laughs> it's so nice. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you just drink hot Dr. Pepper like a normal person? Ew. <laughs> <laughs> yes, taste the clacky. Uh, <laughs> I'm tempted to try legitimately because I, I have an idea of what warm Dr. Pepper tastes like because I've definitely taken a glass that I'd finished some Dr. Pepper in and <laughs> made Pepper. tea and it still headed around. And I was like, that does smell good. <laughs> Not curious enough, though, you know? 
like almost there. I'm like, nah, we'll leave that to the imagination. I can imagine it would taste very sweet. Very sweet. <laughs> it does have um cherry in it. Mead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mead mead's like beer for people who are bad at chemistry. <laughs> I mean, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good if you're going to rent a fair. <laughs> it's about the only time I I drink some. <laughs> I had some in Portugal, and they actually had uh, like a little pot. It wasn't as hot, but it it was warm enough. So it's like, mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> You know, especially like during the Dark Ages, you typically make um, three casts of beer, starting with like stuff that you would consider alcohol. Then you would have second beer. Then you would get down to like your little beer, which would be the third yeah. brew process. Oh, go ahead. If you want to finish it out, huh? No, no, no. I was listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was going to make a comment to it, but go ahead. that's okay. Well, I was just going to say they, they had different levels of beer because the water was contaminated and so bad. So, uh, especially in e England, they had that period where they had to uh, drink only alcohol because it was the only safe thing to drink. That was Europe. <laughs> England, too. Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. It, it's not far off, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brexit may yeah, have all happened, of but Brexit it's not far happened. off. Yeah. <laughs> all of Europe, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry, interrupted you, Ben. Go ahead. So you'd like beers, which you would, um, little beer, which you would call like pub beer. Pedro, have you, you've been in the UK now for a little bit. Have you had pub beer yet? Yes. Yeah. 2%. The, the, it's something you can genuinely drink all day long. And oh, yeah. Be fine the, the, with. Like the regular beer that they have on, like, the yeah. unlabeled tap. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> you can it's start... like, oh, it's flavored water. Okay. <laughs> 11 o'clock in the morning, and if you power through it, you keep a nice little buzz. And be nice and sleepy <laughs> around midnight. Mm -hmm. Can't get that here. Yeah, the, the now they what they're most of the pubs here. Well, to be fair, most of them are owned by the Green King, so it's like major like pub um, and restaurant uh, company, and they have a lot of um, craft beers, and those are usually like five point five, six, seven. It's like, all right, okay. <laughs> Right. You have a snark service? <laughs> Steve, are you even licensed for that anymore? We're going to need oh, to see Discord's your snark back license. up. Good. Okay. <laughs> Discord's <laughs> so... been back up for about 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Well, again, I the, my return video is crap, and I wasn't noticing it. <sighs> Okay. Are you using um the return video to read Discord? No, no. Um, I just I had shut it down because I had just ah. checked it before you came back, and it's <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> that one. I I I, 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 oh, <laughs> I can't because I can't read it. <laughs> okay. That's just because okay. the return window is uh, here and Discord is there. <laughs> There you go, honey. Yeah, your snark is back. There you are. Okay. So I can close the twitches for now. Well, maybe I should keep it up, huh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm lame. Did I break a leg and not realize it? <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, 
<laughs> it might not. It could just be the adrenaline letting you power through it. You'd be like, oh, wait. All right. <laughs> That we have that, and um, we should be good. Boom. <sighs> First recording from Debian. <clears throat> And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit Hello. back, relax, take a midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux. Uh, fair warning, as always, uh, we do our best to try not to put you to sleep, so there will be jokes. There might even be laughter <laughs> if you're looking for something to put you to bed. Just listen to the sound of my voice. Um, that'd be nightmares. Anyway, <laughs> I'm Vince Stone. That's Joe Bryant. That's Pedro Mateus, and we Hello. do have everyone else joining us live, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Moon Time. What's up, everyone? Big oh, show boy. we got to take yeah. care of. Pedro, <laughs> you just finished a uh, project, man. You did a little stream yesterday. Mm -hmm. I did, and uh, joined by uh, Shet Realm member uh, Mayor Theron there, uh, who decided, you know what, it's a good idea to uh, cram... Um, PC hardware into a console box. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to help this uh, poor fool along by getting him the uh, GPU he has on his uh, wish list. <laughs> so yeah, he got me the 1650. So I had a monster. Room. It's like, all right, we're going to talk about it. You what and me, your, what, let's go. <laughs> what are your thoughts on building a PC inside of a um, taxidermy? It's um, <laughs> a lot easier than I expected. At mm. the same time, I wish I could mm. do more, but I realized that, oh, yeah, my one power tool is a Dremel. There's oh. only so much I can do. <laughs> and everything looks like a nail. <laughs> yeah, it's basically a hammer at that point. It's like, <laughs> there, done. <laughs> Jellybean, what's new with you? Oh, so I went to Community Hack Night at Riot Games once again. They let you back and... in? Yes. <laughs> and, then, and we made plans for... For Scale 18X, uh, for our Linux Chicks LA booth, and for Linux Gamecast, the equipment we need for interviewing and and uh, taking That's video and whatnot. That's not a polite way to refer to Alan. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, my cameraman. <laughs> He's awesome. But I just want to let and let everyone to know if they you can get fifty percent off your Scale 18X registration if you use the promo code. C H I X on the first page of the registration. So that's a nice thing. And gosh, so all the scale stuff. And then also, I installed and am loving Ubuntu Mate 1910 on my broadcasting rig. And this is the first time I'm not using an LTS. <laughs> so this is this is unique for me. It's still a stable version, but it's you. not LTS. <laughs> Edgelord. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and thank you to Wimpy. <laughs> and actually, yeah, I've I've noticed improvement in game performance. So that's mm. that's always a good thing. There yes. were a lot of changes made to that <laughs> compositor. <laughs> yes. Ah. Oh, Marco is wonderful. <laughs> well, as for every reward, there must be a sacrifice. So I deinstalled Ubuntu. Ah. Mm. <laughs> Replaced it with Debian. On, um... Ah, okay. On Jackbox. Jackbox. On Jackbox? Yeah. Back there, <laughs> hanging out. Uh, I did for real-time curdle and for a lot of stuff I'm going to be doing coming up. Not that there was anything wrong with 1804 LTS, because if you're going to be running one on a server, you know, just for the uh, support that thing's going to have, it's going to have long legs. Yep. I do recommend that. But I bought a thing. If you watched uh, Keep Track on social media or if you watched Saturday's show, I was like, hmm, I wonder what a $1,200 audio interface sounds like. Hmm. <laughs> so I picked one up and for like 60 bucks because, you know, it's Firewire interface and plugged it in. Went through all the stuff and turned, come to find out, I mean, it's got a driver in the Linux kernel. I was like, oh, that's neat. I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to do a little thing. Just kind of play with it. It's a big chunk of stuff. It's like a 2U rack. It's a Digimax 003 made from Avid. You might have heard of them. Oh, yes. <laughs> and um, clicking noise. I got in the recording. I was like, oh, that's unfortunate. You know, because of course uh, I checked everything and everyone's like, yeah, it works. It works. You know, I mean, everyone, the other person who has one. 
then so I tracked down who was in charge of the also drivers and the kernel, and I was like, "Oh, you have a GitHub, all right? Let's open a little bug. Hey, man, you want to chat? Uh, I, ba- I I barely speak English. He barely speaks English. We have a great um, <laughs> rapport going on." And with the time zones between here and Japan, we've been playing tactics. And it's like, yo, man, I'm getting this clicking noise, right? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's an issue with the device. Yeah. I talked about a couple of years ago on Archive Post, one place inside of SourceForge. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm getting to the point, kids. Don't worry. Um, then that sounds like, so the one thing this interface is supposed to do, it fails at. And that's not listed. You got this accepted in the kernel. Good on you. Um, <laughs> but he's already already said, like, yo, we're I'm dumping logs and getting data uh, to him. He's like, this is like, I'm going to try to fix this because that's what it takes sometimes. You're like, hey, man, I didn't know anyone was still playing with these. I, now I'm going to see if I can get the clock issue synced with the internal bus and firewire. We're, we're going to work on it. So I'm, I'm going to keep it around. It's not like I can do anything with it. But it did spark a thought, mm-hmm. an idea, and, and I kind of had my Gallifrey Falls no more moment after this because I can afford to burn a hundred bucks on something. But I, I was thinking about, I mean, there's been times I couldn't have, like, if I put my money aside and I bought this and got it used, I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is my thing, and I'm going to start doing stuff on Linux. And I ran into that. You don't get to return stuff like this, you know? Yeah. Because you're buying used yeah. hardware. It's like, we really need to do something about this um, for people trying to produce music on Linux, for people who want to do audio recordings, podcast, record guitar, drums, anything like that. There's not a good current database of any sorts. It's scattershot between like FFADO.org and Linux musicians buried in threads. It's not accurate. And most importantly, none of it's up to date. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm going to do it myself. Oh, yay! Then this is, this is how you got Linux Gamecast kids ten years yeah. ago. I was like, nobody's <laughs> doing this. I'm not yes. the right person to do this, but okay, if I got to do it, so I'm going to be um getting all these devices that I can off of eBay. I've already started my like 99 cents list. Piss. I want I want the junk. You know, give me the stuff, and I'm going to pull it in. We're going to video it. We're going to document it. We're going to figure out what works, how it works, if it's good. And create a legitimate database of audio interfaces that you can pick up from old ancient PCI stuff to Firewire to current USBs. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want your old hardware. That's kind of the point of this. If you know of anyone or if you in your closet, you're like, hey, man, I got something with an XLR jack or a quarter inch jack and it plugs into a computer and I don't want it anymore. And you would be throwing it away. Hit, hit me up on the contact form on Linux Gamecast. It's like, send me your old audio junk and um, let me test it so we can get it added to the list. And I'm going to be buying a bunch of the stuff out of pocket too. So this is, this is shooting myself on both feet. It's kind of brilliant, but it needs <laughs> it needs to get done. Yes. So, and it's going to be a gateway drug. It's going to be a way to spread Linux because I'm like, yo, do you want to use this really nice audio button? Won't work on Windows and there's not a Mac. With a firewire port on it, ah, you want to run Linux? Come on, let me, let me get you set up. That's going to be our gateway drug. So we got gaming, and I'm also going to be trying to sneak in audio and music production on them to spread the Penguin love. <laughs> Yay! That's my story. I look forward to it. Yay. And I'm still waiting. <laughs> You're going to get me playing guitar. That's going to be terrifying. That's Stay awesome. Stay tuned, kids. <laughs> um, we're going to do this right. We're going to do this right. I'm going to have to get some equipment, but that's going to come down. We're going to work with what we have for right now until we get all the uh, testing methods down exactly how I want to flow with it. But yeah, that's what I've been up to. Yay. Mm, yes. Cool. Maybe Why? I'll buy a brand new Thread Ripper. <laughs> Wait, I already have one. Uh, can I get two? Yeah. <laughs> yes. We'd all love one of these. <laughs> Let's get right into it after that. Uh, System 76. Thelio Major, now available with Ryzen 3990X. See what 64 cores can do to your wallet. I mean for you. You can apply circular motion, blur in 44 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> yes. Mm, you can compile the Linux kernel in 24 seconds. Ooh. <laughs> Woohoo. Render a blender seat in classroom in 76 nice. seconds. And what mm-hmm. other? Oh, empty your wallet. In eight seconds. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. 
dude <laughs> this this is actually pretty pretty cool um and they were right on it this was like day of release they were like yo mm-hmm. yes. yo we have one of our atari looking cases and everything ready to go <laughs> I mean, it's really the closest thing to an Atari you can get nowadays. Uh, <laughs> dude, it, it is a better They're love beautiful. story than, you know, the Atari hotels. That's a real thing. So mm-hmm. I wanted to put one together, you know, a realistic one. As somebody sitting here coming to you with a Threadripper in front of them that they built. Um, thanks to all the beautiful party patrons. We did it on a wicked tight budget, but we got it together. This is like, man, I would to assemble one that I would. Of course, it's going to be bridge. A walnut. Yes, birch would be, yeah. <laughs> 18, let's go with an LTS. And of course, we're going to get the $2,900 option for the processor. Now, this is, you know, I, I know everyone likes to just max out everything. You know, they want to Apple the computer. But realistically, mm-hmm. let's go with 32 gigs of RAM. I want a two terabyte NVMe. And uh, uh, nope, no, no additional. I'm good with that. No additional no. NVMe. We're, we're good with the SSDs. <laughs> two and a half inch. <laughs> GPU selection is where I ran into a little bit of an issue because let's say I want, because I definitely want two GPUs. I want one for the monitor to power the displays and I want a nice big uh, compute, (laughs) but I have a 2080 or 2080 Ti and I want a 2070. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I go to 2070, I can do 2080, 2080 Ti, 2080. 2080 or 20, um, 2080 Ti? 2080. <laughs> there, it no... seems like a rather arbitrary limitation, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this this genuinely, because again, I, when I was putting this together, I was thinking, okay, let's do this as realistic. You know, it's like, no, I just want two 2080 Ti's or Titan RTXs. But in a realistic configuration, I'd get a 2060 and I would get a 2070 Super. Just mm-hmm. for those extra CUDA cores, this is a render card. This is not an option. Um, I wonder if that is by intent or not. But yeah, that's definitely a limitation. That's something I'd be looking for with DaVinci Resolve because it's genuinely a checkbox inside of Resolve. Like, hey, I want to use one for compute and one for display and, you know, just for your timeline and everything else. But uh, what did it end up for? $7,774. Which sounds like a lot, but for <laughs> a rendering workstation, something that I can yeah. legitimately do work on that has a warranty and has support. If I was buying this yes. for a company, that's a good price, I think. Yeah, I mean, they're comparably priced to others in the industry like Dell. And uh, look at, <laughs> yeah, the the Apple Mac Pro. Uh <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's so, 6000 with an RX 580. Exactly, mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, and the only thing I noticed about this was uh, the um, RX 552 gig is, is, is their lowest end option. And I think it should be a little higher, maybe RX 560 with four gig, just, just because they're inexpensive now. But that was, that was the only thing. Uh, complaint that i saw i don't have many <laughs> i would die to have this for my blender moto and maya renders <laughs> i would like to build a da vinci box for that but like the radian the radian series with nothing against 5700 5700 xt those th- those are tinker toys compared to i know it's, you consider an older architecture but the vega mm-hmm. vega 7 which is the radion 7 radian 7 yeah yeah because what did the thing have like H- it had hbm2 but what was that stack uh, 16, 16 gigs, gigs i think yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> far as crunching like numbers even in blender that's that's the amd option i would go for but i know they're they've been end up lived but hmm. yeah know. and they're not dropping in price at all um no. although just for an exercise i, I did try pedro, and, like, I, pedro i know you're not about to and blow people's mind by telling them that you could build one cheaper yourself because that's impossible <laughs> oh no uh, what i'm going to say is don't try and build like a high-end uh home desktop pc inside the thelio 
you're not going to like the result because I built basically the equivalent of this configuration that I have right now, eight cores, 16 threads, and something that performs about on par with the 1080, which in the case of the Thelio is a 2070 Super. So it's slightly better parts in the 900, uh, 9800X from Intel. Mm -hmm. So yeah, slightly better uh, on a per part uh, performance. But when you look at the price, uh, this one, I put it together. If you were going to put one together exactly as I have it right now, yep. it would cost I, I, you... We have a live feed under your desk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that looks like my Mine computer. is definitely not as pink <laughs> or as uh, water-cooled, but uh, it is. it costs around $1,500 for you to put a configuration like mine, just a tower, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. for you to put a configuration like mine together. With a... Um, SATA YOLO RAID. So two SSDs uh, in YOLO RAID, so you can get n close to a gigabyte per second in uh, sequential writes. This one, uh, the Thelio, the closest configuration you can get, you don't get that YOLO RAID, and it comes out to $2,996. Mm. It's a great thing that they offer that much support, but don't, just don't. It, this is for workstation level stuff. Yeah. This, so don't exactly. 76 is i mean they <laughs> set themselves up i mean this is a premium brand you know it yeah, is absolutely uh, and again they offer that support you mm -hmm. have that support as long as the system is running you have that support and you have like the base warranty is a year so if something happens during that first year you can get it replaced and after that you still have support so that's great <laughs> And you have genuine Corinthian wood paneling. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> you got that wood grain. <laughs> a wood grain, man. It's, it's worth its price in gold, Pedro. <laughs> gold press latinum. Yeah. <laughs> Good news, everyone. Evernote. Yeah. So does everyone remember Evernote? It used to be nope. everywhere. <laughs> So Ever Evernote has made uh, a lot of improvements in the last year, and um, they rebuilt their mobile client and have data migration to the cloud now. But the big news is, is that coming soon to a Linux desktop near you, finally, Evernote, Evernote Yes will be on our Linux desktop. And I've actually been using Evernote for many, many years, and I used it heavily on my WebOS smartphone. Um, and yeah, that is Linux. So it, it, it shouldn't take much to port it over to Linux because it's already <laughs> been running on Linux devices and for, for years ago too. And I used to use it to not just take notes, but um, to send pictures and files uh, to, to the Evernote client on other devices. It was one of, be, mm -hmm. before cloud computing became huge, that was, that was a nice, easy, quick way to do it. Because mm -hmm. Evernote was everywhere. Well, I'm 100% positive, Pedro, that we have no worries of it being um, an Electron app. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. Of course it will. Even Why would you yeah. make such horrible accusations <laughs> against the fine people at Evernote? It's a web yeah. app. That, that, that's its whole shtick. You, you really can't not be Electron at this point. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it, it used to be that... Evernote, as far as I knew what it was, it was a browser extension. I didn't mm. even know they had a dedicated client oh, that could okay. basically do <laughs> everything. So it's like, oh, it's a, a browser extension that you just send it to Evernote, and then you, when you go on another PC, you just get the Evernote extension, you log in, it's like, oh, there's all your stuff. Cool. I, I, yeah. It, <laughs> in 2020, it kind of seems like Google Docs with a bunch of extra steps thrown in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then yeah, again, it's, it's, you know, maybe there's something to be said. Uh, if you haven't already written that check to Google, which I have, it's, it's too late for me. Yeah. He'd, he'd, he'd not the words of this old man, but. Uh, well, yeah. it's it's simple. It's very simple to use. And, you know, it, it was, it's been around before uh, Google did all the things. So and it was kind of the one that everyone is is. Um, basing their system off of uh, for taking notes, including Joplin, Laverna, and SimpleNote, which are great alternatives for Linux to Evernote as well. But they're very similar. <laughs> 
That's nice. Maybe I'll be able to download it in this new app center. Uh, you yes. may uh, <laughs> very well uh, be able to in the short, short future because the fine, fine folks at Elementary OS have decided, yep, yeah, we have a pretty good looking operating system. Uh, we have one of the best uh, app stores out there that actually has a bit of a revenue model for um, allowing developers to get paid. And uh, there's Daddy Alfre, the founder uh, and CEO of um, Elementary OS. And basically, uh, they're doing a bit of an Indiegogo campaign, which they are now 115% funded. Uh, they were looking for uh, 7,700 pounds, and right now, with 26 days left still, they're up to 8,900. So things are looking good. And what they're going to do is get the funding to bring the team together into uh, Boston, and basically do a little bit of a sprint for a while and all of the they have a little chart breakdown of where the money is going to go and it's basically going to be like food making sure everyone has a place to stay travel taxes and of course any backer rewards that you would like by uh picking one of the higher tiers uh they will cover those as well so and this isn't the first time that they've had a uh, crowdfunding campaign so that's that's great to see but, and uh, I realized that this is my own uh, stinky butt talking, uh, it, as someone who doesn't really appreciate the social interactions IRL, let's put it like that, uh, <laughs> this seems like a bit of a waste of money. But I realize that this is my bias speaking. Some people re really do genuinely work better if they could just get together and get it done. That said, you know, <laughs> they're adding flat pack support, so I guess that redeems them. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and actually, if um, it, it turns out that if you make it easy to contribute to open source projects, you know, the Linux community and uh, we are, you know, more than happy to fund the apps that we, we so love, including funding the app center which is is well above 100 percent now it was like 107 percent two days ago our our theron said and mm -hmm. funded which is really awesome and um i actually donated via google pay and paypal and this is this I, to me is really wonderful and because because again we want to want to contribute to our favorite open source projects and they're talking about having a secure wallet to save payment methods too and uh, enable fast one-click purchasing and that is what we need that's what we need to just make that that's so easy to donate and like to we be disro agnostic like yes, raspberry exactly. bird mentioned in uh, in discord it's like make this disro exactly. agnostic Create a centralized way to manage your account, so if you want to install it, uh, you can just reinstall the App Center and get your apps that you paid for again. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Best of luck with awesome. it. And yeah, man, uh, sometimes it's best to get a group of people together to get things accomplished, even though Pedro would rather be yeah. on an island by himself with high-speed internet. You hear oh, that, Nori? I am. Did you well, hear the, that? Well, the, K, the KDE I and like Ubuntu. Nori, so she gets a pass. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, KDE and Ubuntu and many of the open source projects have sprints that are very successful and bring a mm -hmm. lot of uh, progress to the No, like the I said, that, that is very much my bias speaking. So. I know. <laughs> oh, we got to get Pedro to scale. <laughs> So I s still Something. don't know what Minecraft is, but they're fighting the yes. good fight. Ah. It's an AI. It, uh, it's, uh, the original goal was to be something like the Google Assistant or Alexa. So, yeah. well, uh, mm -hmm. it's kind of, uh, I think that plan is still very much in motion, but uh, they are uh, tr sort of broadening the whole AI thing and actually having a proper open source AI going. But this, this isn't about that. This is about a patent troll that tried to hit um, Mycroft with a, a spurious lawsuit over a very frivolous patent that is so generic that I'm surprised that it's even become an actual patent. Mm. But they did. And so um, Joshua Montgomery, current uh, head honcho over at uh, Mycroft, is taking the fight back to those people. And he... 
he's basically doing this because in the US, the only way to get anything done legally is to set a precedent. So you can basically be guaranteed that in the future, no one's going to try, at least not in the near future, while that memory is still fresh. So he's going to fight this as much as he can all the way through to set that precedent. Mm -hmm. You Yay. go. You do it. <laughs> we kind of need... Especially with patent trolls, because yes. they're often so frivolous. Uh, th those suits are so frivolous that... How does this have even happen? What you happen? basically have currently in the United States is, I mean, you have uh, the, the legal services that do nothing more than, I mean, you have companies that just collect patents. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they will go out and litigate. And you have to get this stuff fought and you have to get it dismissed with prejudice in order to prevent them from ever coming back. So this is definitely fighting the good fight. And I say good on them. Yeah. Yep. Because you know, they look at it like, is coming at frivolous patent trolls. It's like, yeah, hey, let's see. We had to try, right? Yeah. But you're starting to see some judges slap them down. So mm -hmm. good on you lot for doing that. Yay. Jill, do you plan on suing anybody for infringing on your patents? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> never, never. And, you know, this is, is great. Is that because you don't have any patents? You know? uh, actually, I don't, but my husband does. He has many. <laughs> <laughs> he stole them fair so and square. There he is. Is what I'm hearing. Yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, this is great because, you know, this this recently happened to the Gnome Foundation. So, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, and we all donated to that. So let's keep that that going and, and support the good fight. <laughs> good news, everyone. OpenShot 2.5.0 is released. Video editing plus. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Hardware mm -hmm. acceleration. Ooh. Jonathan writes, he says, I'm proud to announce the release of OpenShot 2.5.0, our largest release yet in honesty. This release got a bit too large, and I almost crushed my brain, but I'm happy to finally release it in the wild. May it have safe travels. Let's start with the highlights, the big one, the one that got my mm -hmm. attention. Yes. I turned my head <laughs> and I said, wait a minute, what? I was told this was impossible. <laughs> We're talking about hardware encoding and decoding support with 250. Uh, you are going to get some rudimentary stuff, you know, NV encode, NV mm -hmm. decode, which is not really good. But you, they're saying we're going to be able to see performance jumps between 30 and 40%, um, throwing stuff in the timeline. I don't know, maybe for rendering out, there are improvements to keyframe key English, man, performance improvements, uh, export, import, EDL, XML, uh, Blender support for 2.8. Plus, that was always something with OpenShot, is it had integrated um, Blender support for making 3D titles since yes. forever ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, SVG compatibility improvements, that's neat. I'm having to read a lot of this, unfortunately, because I took the Pepsi challenge. I was very excited. Mm -hmm. I wanted mm -hmm. to test out the hardware. GPU encoding, decoding support. So I yeah. downloaded the app image. I ch modded executable, that little critter. I launched OpenShot 2.5.0 to take advantage of my 12 cores, 24 threads, 32 gigs of RAM, and RTX video card. And I drug the hate mail segment from LGC Weekly into the timeline, into the media bin, which is 1080p60 HEVC H.265 with two PCM16 WAV files for audio tracks. And it spike crashed. <laughs> oh, so it's still open shot is what you're saying. <laughs> I tried. I really tried. I was Aww. like, ooh, ooh, oh, oh, maybe, the, maybe it was a fluke. Let's go to Michigan. Oh, oh! <laughs> I'm so yeah, sorry. Yeah, I remember Ven uh, <laughs> actually going on rants um, early, early uh, in the uh, Linux game cast days. Uh, it's like Me? yeah, OpenShot keeps crashing. Rants? 
Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, <laughs> I have this script set at like every 30 seconds, mm -hmm. it saves three. my project. Three. Or three seconds, <laughs> not 30. Yeah. <laughs> every three seconds, it saves the project. But I have to because it keeps crashing. <laughs> it, you know, I first started doing videos like a decade ago with Katie and Live. Then Katie and Live bit the dust on me one time where I was deep into a project and corrupted the project. Yeah. I was like, never again. I went uh. scorched earth on that. And I started using Open Shot. Then Open Shot just got so far behind. So I went back to Katie and Live. Then, then I, I drank of the forbidden fruit. I, it's like DaVinci Resolve. It was like, oh, oh, this, <laughs> is, this, this, this is how the others live. What? <laughs> I, I, I can just sling stuff around a timeline and it works and I can render it in eight minutes. And okay, here's $300. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but Aww. I'm always open to it. It's like, I would much rather prefer to have an open source solution, but yeah, I, you know, even like, I, I could say, it's like, well, you don't hate the environment that much. I'm like, okay, make that argument. I was like, watch me. Because I would spend an hour and a half at full tilt rendering on the CPU where I can do it in eight minutes using the GPU and far less electricity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And you can also actually do that in Shotcut as well because they have the experimental GPU accel acceleration that does a pretty good job. Unfortunately, we're at the point at LGC where I don't have time for experimental. Yes. I gotta yeah, get I stuff know. done. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but yeah, like Ven was saying earlier, you can import and export EDL um, or edit decisions lists from Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, which is a really, really big deal because those are, you know, that's industry standard being able to do that, as well as XML configuration files, which lots of animation programs use, and Final Cut Pro. So that was a, a, a major upgrade. And um, this version of OpenShot, like many other um, animation gra graphics programs, um, has the ability now to recover previous saves from a recovery folder. Uh, that's a big deal because if you accidentally uh, delete files or you have a crash when you're working on a huge timeline, uh, that comes in handy, and all the other um, major industry standard applications have that function. So good on you, OpenShot. That that was a really good addition. It's a step in the right direction. One of the things with that <laughs> is something you'll see with um, DaVinci or um, several other is their database backend. Yeah. So you're not dealing with a file. Um, I, DaVinci database is replicated, so... Yes. Even if we run into a situation like that. Plus, the idea of crashing is foreign to me now. Yeah. Like, what? What's a <laughs> video editor crashing? No. How, how did I live like that? Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> it's progress. Uh, did you try it, Jill? Yes, I did. I did. Um, with the EDL, um, I actually exported from DaVinci to, to OpenShot and mm -hmm. in the reverse, and it did fine with that. Mm. Um, obviously, you know, not all the filters transfer over, it's just simple cuts and whatnot, but it's mm -hmm. really nice if you've done work like an hour on a project and you have hundreds of cuts to go back and forth without having to render it out as a, a raster movie and lose quality importing it in. So that's, that's a big deal. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. I, I'm glad to see open shot making progress again, because I'll be honest with you this time last year, was like, yeah, is anything How's this project yeah. going to do? So, yeah. It, although yeah. I have seen uh, OpenShot working, because uh, Nori's been using it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's like I just need something really quick to mm -hmm. edit some video files, string them together, put some music on it, stick there. Uh, yeah, OpenShot. Perfect. And for that. Uh, she's been using it a lot, so yeah. <laughs> right on, right on, mm -hmm. mate. Yeah. There's a new this one. Is, <laughs> yes, this is exciting. <laughs> Mate 124 has been released with, and it has lots of new features, improvements, and bug fixes, including uh, one of the major things is high DPI support now for the buttons, like the min max close buttons on Windows, and lots of icons around the desktop. And, you know, that's actually really cool. Um, you know, I've since I've been using um, Ubuntu Mate, I've been noticing 
quite a few high DPI issues and, you know, not being able to see certain icons and the window buttons being too small on my Ultra HD monitor I have in front of me. And um, it's I'm really nice. I'm glad you nice. finally got it in front of you because it was weird with it behind you. <laughs> 43 inch of uh, goodness with 230 inch monitors and portrait on the side yes <laughs> i have a lot of desktop space now but as a result running in high dpi it's it's you know i have i'm considered visually impaired i really only see out of one eye and so i've had to whip out magnus a few times the um uh, uh zooming uh, visually uh, impaired impaired pro uh, visually impaired program <laughs> the, the zoom zooming well, program for the... <laughs> <magnifier>. yes. <laughs> yes the zooming and magna there it is magnification <laughs> for the for uh, people of low vision and that's really helped me out a lot and there is something other uh, another cool feature that's going to happen with the window manager marco they're finally going to add invisible resized borders so no more struggling to find a border to grab with your mouse. That's, that's oh, always no, been You an don't issue. have to struggle. Uh, it's, yeah, there. It's, it's there. It's always there. It's exactly there. one pixel wide. Yes. Mm. So yeah, exactly. uh, on that uh, 16,000 DPI mice, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you kids with your fancy non track bowl mice. Yes. If you've never played with me, you don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> It's a continuation of GNOME 2. I, I always like to say, imagine if the um, beautiful fine yeah. folks at Gnome never lost their frowning minds and <laughs> just made Gnome better. But hey, you have made for that and it works. Yeah. It's great. It's a solid it project. I've never had anything terribly negative to say about it because it's like, yo, remember Gnome 2? That, yeah. that worked. <laughs> It's that, but with more functionality. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Completely. Yeah. Right. And um, one of the things, that, like the thing that jumped out at me the most, because it's a very nice uh, list of like, if, even if you go into the details, it's a very nice list of uh, stuff that they approve, but it's like, ooh, uh, we've also added a new mate disk image mounter utility. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're finally letting me mount ISOs without me having to pseudo. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> KD's uh, been able to do that for a long time. Gnome 3 has been able to do that for a long time. Pretty sure even XFC lets me do that without pseudo. For a long yeah. time. <laughs> Doesn't auto... Okay, it's been a long time. Okay, I, I'm not trying to throw any shit. I haven't had a physical media drive in, but doesn't that auto mount? When you drop it in... No, no, I'm talking about ISOs. I, I the just ISO, mounting so you a can disk go in, image. <laughs> you can change your identity. Oh, you the mean ISO mounting and... an actual loopback device type. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> quit, quit stealing stuff. Um... <laughs> I backed up my entire PC game library into my um, external hard drive. Yeah, yeah, I it's read here somewhere. news for the articles. <laughs> um, Linux-based Windows, speaking of um, yeah. weird, bizarre software that you might have an oh, ISO format. Yeah. This one came out, well, it, this one doesn't come in the ISO format. If you would like to get it, you need to spend 15 pounds on the DVD, but we'll get to that. Uh, this uh, came, uh, This is the article from Beta News. If you look all over the internet, you'll find an article from some website. Uh, this one has managed to accrue 446 comments, so that should tell you everything you need to know. Um, yeah, basically, uh, someone got... Um, Linux Lite, uh, the 1804 uh, version, or an even older one, because... Um... We, we will get it with this <laughs> read. No upgrading yeah. whenever you nope. want to work. No upgrades that fail, so you cannot upgrade any more, forcing you to buy more Windows 10, period. That, There's I'm a sold. comma missing there. Take my yeah. money. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, this is uh, Windows 12. Except not really. It, it it is just Linux Lite with the Windows 10. Um, Wait a minute. Desktop Are you trying wallpaper. to tell me this isn't legit? No, no, no. If anyone had any doubts at this point, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> just because they were using Arial for the font, it 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 doesn't make it legit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, clearly. Um, if you have the ability to print out a bunch of uh, labels, stick them on DVDs, and sell them for uh, 15 pounds a pop, 
Uh, you probably also have the mental equity necessary to realize that Uncle Soft is gonna sue somebody if you don't stop. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> postage is free. In the ro- okay, so fine. first class by Royal Mail. <laughs> All I'm saying is, I now Aww. have your Christmas present taken care of. Oh, there we go. That would be. You know what? Cool. I'll do a stream of that. I'll install it on stream. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> have to dig up a DVD drive somewhere. You probably have one with your collection of I laptops. Do. Yeah. A oh yes. Blue one. <laughs> external one that I can plug into this box. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, I've probably got a hundred DVD drives in this room. Fill my uh, old computers and vintage computers. Um, but I think Same this thing. campaign <laughs> yeah, to help migrate Windows users to Linux is really well done. And, you know, <laughs> so not just covering their cost to make the DVDs, um, but charging for them or any software is a paradigm that Windows users are used to. This is brilliant. <laughs> they're used to paying <laughs> for for their applications, no, and they used not. to have to play for Windows. They are not. Quit accusing them. <laughs> Windows users are not accustomed to buying stuff. Oh, well, they're not accustomed to buying the OS now, but well, they're, they're still accustomed to writing. They're to not buying accustomed those apps, to buying video Adobe. games. You do, you do have not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's I, that's not the highest pirated piece of um. <laughs> no. And oh, the other cool thing is that there's a 32 bir- bit version. 32 of birds. this. <laughs> 32 <laughs> version <laughs> of this as well for older hardware. Which, unlike the base Linux Lite, does not include the Linux Lite yeah. is only actually sixty-four Hence the whole, bit. it's so, based on an older version of Linux exactly. Lite. It's not even the current one. It's not the current one. <laughs> For stability. <laughs> so the moral of this story, at the end of the day, if you have relatives you don't like, this is their Windows 7 upgrade disk. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Just, oh man, you really gotta hate them. <laughs> I, I, okay, yeah. okay, and they have no way of contacting you after you. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. This is important. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we need to get into a slice of pie. But before that, we gotta thank the beautiful people that make this show possible. Mm-hmm. That is you at home joining us on Patreon.com, helping us pay some of the bills for some of the insanity that we bring you five days a week. If you'd like to get in on that action, uh, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, several reward tiers we have available. We have Libra Pay. We have merch. Speaking of that, boom, look at that. Look at those faces. Mm-hmm. We have shirts. <laughs> we have Hell Elks. We have our faces. We have the weekly, daily Wednesdays, Franks. We got mugs. We got penguins. We got chairs. Yeah. I've thrown a <laughs> gang of stuff on the wish list when I realized that I'm going to be filming a lot of stuff in the future. Oh. Yeah. Look, there's even a like non wish list thing. I need some new guitar knobs. Um, but everything else is like <laughs> soldering iron, amps, audio stuff. That's just there because whatever. Um, but that will because get you. Because it's a 32 core 64 thread? Permanently <laughs> listed for yes. all eternity or until this one's full, whichever comes Aww. first. Um, Carl, my. <laughs> oh, man. I got to do this every time. Basil and Arthur. And Basil. Arthur. And- <laughs> Yeah. Yes. So you can see it. <laughs> yeah. Frank's a little out of the shot because I was filming stuff back there and he's a little camera shy sometimes. But I want to thank each and every one. We do have a new, a long time, a long time yes. picture has increased their pledge. Yeah. Frosty yes. is our new executive producer. Oh, thank you so much, Frosty or uh, Frostclaw in, in chat. He's... Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> Boom. Uh oh. That's what they're. <laughs> we oh, found there. Rohit. Rohit. We found Rohit. Wonderful. <laughs> Rohit. Yeah, there's his Monster Trek uh, shirt with the, with the three boys, the boys of LGC. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of brilliant, but uh, that's cool, man. I Frosty thinks a lot. Uh, Frosty read a nice little note, and I'm not going to read it because he'd get angry Aww. at me. But he's like, that's, you guys do a cool show. I've been listening for a long time. Want to help out? And 
then he messed up and he's like, if you ever need anything 3D printed, I was like, oh, you yes. messed up there, son. Oh, you done goofed now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he has a wonderful YouTube channel that, you know, he, sh he shows uh, different projects he's done on his 3D printer and, and Raspberry Pi. Very, mm -hmm. very good. Yeah. Really good YouTube channel. Weird. Definitely going to <laughs> be taking advantage of that because I, I I need camera custom 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 things. But thanks, yes, you do. Each and every one of you. Who are making this possible? Yeah. Loud, live, independent, commercial free, and for all these years, man. Let's just keep rolling with it. There's a lot more to get done. But Pi gonna give gonna it to give you. it to you if you're pie in the mood is gonna for give some it to pie. You. <laughs> <laughs> Raspbian Yay! Update. So we have a, a first of the year Raspbian update, which is really awesome. And they've made a lot of changes. And one is to the PC Man FM file manager. That's one of my favorite file managers. They gave it a much cleaner look and feel um, with the theming of the desktop and moved some things around just to make it look a little fresher. And uh, the big news here is... I was happy to hear that the Orca screen reader is now available on Raspbian. This is really wonderful. I have a lot of visually impaired friends and students that have complained about this, that they can't, you know, have the screen readers on the Raspberry Pi. So Apparently an Orca compatible mm -hmm. browser is uh, Firefox CSR. Yes, yep. yes. Chrome, <laughs> Chromium isn't yet compatible, but it will be soon. So you do have to install Firefox CSR. And the other big improvement they made is they brought back pixel doubling, which uh, uh, doubles the screen size, uh, makes everything larger on the screen by a scaling, factor of two. Finally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they had it and then they took it away. And I remember trying to look for it. Why isn't it there? They, they had taken it away because it wasn't compatible. That's a practical joke that got a little out of hand, but don't worry about this <laughs> Yes. So that is so much nicer, especially when you're running Raspbian on those little tiny screens. <laughs> that, <laughs> that It's good or, for everyone. let's say <laughs> you have a Raspberry Pi 4 plugged into a UHD screen and you actually want to be able to tell what the heck's going on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it is so tiny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. really because... good to see. Looking at the yeah. theme on the file manager, it's like, I'm getting a little BOS vibe on that. But yeah, <laughs> be rest assured, um, if I do see you with a Raspberry Pi with a monitor plugged in running a GUI, I will quietly judge you. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't go into the um, Raspberry Pi store. There's like six uh, Raspberry Pi <laughs> set up on the desk plugged into monitors. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not talking about the people <laughs> selling it to the people that I will quietly judge. They're cool. They're providing me with a, additional people to quietly judge. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's absolutely cool. Um, mm -hmm. Fantastic piece of kit. Just all around. Yes. Great support. Um, happy, happy. Joy. Yeah. Joy. Joey. Hey. If you don't have a powerful enough Raspberry Pi to drive a UHD screen, maybe you have mm -hmm. one of those teeny tiny uh, five pound Raspberry Pi Zeros or Raspberry Pi Zero Ws. And maybe yes. you need it to power on every now and then just for a quick thing and then immediately power it back off. Well, this board will let you do it off of two AA batteries. Uh, they say you'll get around, um, I think it's two hours of uh, hmm. Pi uh, mobility with just the two um, AA batteries. And it, of course, uh, plugs into the GPIO. So you have a power switch and a little, uh, couple of uh, voltage regulators. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Two AA batteries. And you got yourself your Pi Zero or your Pi Zero W. I can think of a couple of things to do with the Pi Zero W to just pull out of my pocket, flip the switch, let it, uh, let it stay on for 10 minutes and then flip it back out. Yeah. But they're not strictly legal, so. Double <laughs> <laughs> A batteries are definitely worried about That's brilliant. longevity, but uh, <laughs> maybe even if you were just setting something up as a temporary um, UPS of sorts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that that's what I was And if you're just using thinking. yeah. Yeah, the Raspberry mm -hmm. Pi for just uh, the brains to start something up like the starter motor on a car. Mm -hmm. And then once the thing starts, you turn that off. There, done. Starter motor yeah. of double A's. I don't know what I I'm assuming <laughs> there's like one for 18650s. 
Right. I mean, if they can do mm-hmm. it with double A's, you could with a better, slightly better VRM, you can pull off a couple of eighteen six fifties. Yeah, uh, I just want to see how long I can power a Pi W zero W off. Like, uh, so uh, three thousand uh, milliamps. Thirty five hundred. Like thirty five hundred. You scrub with your three thousand. Thirty five hundred. Yeah, <laughs> thirty five hundred milliamps off of a eighteen six fifty. So you get two. Uh, I'm guessing. Apologies, I promise there would be no maths. There we were. Um, <laughs> if you want to get in touch with us, odd change. LinuxGamecast.com yes. forward slash contact. Uh, we have just make sure you select the right show. Uh, this is LWDW. If you've got a project you want to tell us about, or if you want, hey man, you want to come on the show, we're down with that. If you want to send me your audio junk, I'll put it to mm-hmm. a good cause. That's the thing. Give us name, email, subject. You can leave a YouTube comment, but those get a little too out of hand uh, trying to track down. So that's the best way to get mm. in touch with us. We look forward oh, to your yes. feedback. Pedro looks forward yes. to reading it, and Jill looks yeah. forward to laughing at it. <laughs> <laughs> that's Jill's secret. She's laughing yeah. at all of us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're going to roll some credits. Credits. Yes. Yay. <laughs> The Linux Gamecast original series. Ben Stone, <laughs> Pedro Mateus, <laughs> and myself. <laughs> and what's your name again? <laughs> Jill Bryant. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I, I hadn't done that intro in a while for the <laughs> credits. <laughs> and thank you to our beautiful <laughs> executive producers, including our, the new Frosty and our yes. beautiful producers. <laughs> All those lovely, lovely producers. There's uh, Frostclaw again. That needs updating. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Frosty. Awesome. Yeah, mm. seriously. Thank you. All of you. That's uh, wonderful. Four years and one episode. So. Yes. Yay. <laughs> this is our one episode after our fourth birthday. <laughs> <laughs> As a person who's been here for every single one, I apologize. <laughs> I don't. Bye bye. We love you. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fourth birthday hangover. <laughs> Raspberry Bird. Yes. And I was so happy, Pedro, you remembered and tweeted that out because I was just like, I knew it was somewhere in February. I only remembered after the show. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, damn it. That was four <laughs> years. I forgot. <laughs> so I'm glad you tweeted it out and then I tweeted it out. And that that was, that worked out perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pennywise. He's probably got lots access to a lot of audio equipment for Ven. <laughs> Oh. Mm. <laughs> if you see any audio interface equipment, um, just hit me up in the contact form. Anybody with that? Because I mean, this is just something I'm going to do. Yeah. Gosh, I used to have tons of stuff, but not anymore. Not since we don't have our radio station at El Camino anymore. (laughs) I had firewire equipment. Uh... If you're taking a look at, if you know what an audio interface is, that's kind of the, what I am on the lookout for right now is stuff that is poorly, poorly documented. So I anything Motu, which is Mark of the Unicorn, mm. anything from them, because all of that hardware has been reverse engineered. Um, anything from RME, RME Fire, I don't think anybody's going to give those things up because mm. those are still wicked expensive. Mackie interfaces, Sapphire, Mackie, yeah. like a Sapphire mm-hmm. Pro 40. I would say pre-Sonus, but I got some wicked expensive pre-Sonus stuff showing up uh, probably at the beginning of next week. 
So I'll be able to get the numbers and tests done for that. And um, I will uh, need some help with the uh, setup on the um, Xenix when you have some time then, because both the cables arrived today. <laughs> oh, nice. I mean, is Google not working for you? <laughs> it's like, yes, but, you know, just to be sure. <laughs> or unless you want to do it all on uh, Saturday. Why would I be doing any of it, period? Little, little boy. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> I know that it's going to change dramatically from what I, when I do it, but okay. <laughs> well, when you're on the shows, uh, the way you do it is, like, not have any of it on. That MDX and all that's for your live streams, not yeah, not for these shows. Okay, cool. <laughs> I have all your stuff programmed digitally into a strip. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Well, that's easy enough to do. I just unplug from the Xenix, plug into the thing there. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> science, man. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, I bought this one on that store you showed me. Mm -hmm. And it got here quicker than the Amazon Prime, the other cable. <laughs> well, you said you were ordering music equipment, and I was like, well, well, you're in the UK, why don't you order it from the music store in the UK? Uh, the ones I'd found, it's like, oh, those are stupidly expensive. I didn't know about that. Uh, I can't even remember the name of that store, but it that's one of the bookmarks that I have now. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's even music. Like, I highly recommend buying used equipment from Guitar Center's used equipment. And if you're in the States and you're looking for something like amps, interfaces, and the like, because they have very reasonable pricing on their used equipment, like mixers and stuff like that. I got this control yeah. surface. And, but... If you buy anything from Guitar Center, don't. Even their employees. They, I, I forget what I was there when I was picking up something. It might have been like this art preamp. It's like, yo, I need an XLR to a TRS cable. And it's like, do you guys have one? It's like, yeah. I'm like, am I going to do better just making one at home? And he's like, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> we went over there and looked. It was like twenty six dollars. It's for a three dollar cable, people. Mm. What? What is it, Lassie? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at Twitter. What? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't you tell by the uh, big blue screen? It's like, e <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm, nope. There, big blue screen. <laughs> yeah, Ben, when we used to get equipment for the radio station at El Camino College, um, we used to, you know, not tell them for, it was for a radio station. <laughs> So that that would always that would help out. <laughs> we got a lot of donations though. Um, we got Mattel to donate a two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar oh, soundboard. I wonder where that came from. Yes. <laughs> 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 but that that was uh, one I learned on. It was it was great. <laughs> yeah, the original mixer I learned on before I started going to the other uh, radio stations here in LA was one that someone had just made themselves. It was beautiful walnut mixer and it was, it was wonderful, but it started to die and it couldn't be fixed anymore. Well, fortunately I don't have the <laughs> displeasure of doing live radio in any station still using analog. Yeah. I'm sure there's some in like a lean to somewhere, but even the smaller stations that I'll do morning drive yeah. time, everybody's yeah. digital. I mean, they've been digital it's for the digital. past 15 years. Mm -hmm. But 
these are the kind of deals I'm trying to put in everyone's face. Look at this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that. Two channel, two headphones, phantom power, MIDI, spitoff. Nice. <laughs> Wait, go back to the DIN connectors. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Firewire. <laughs> Buck 29. <laughs> uh, still got six days to go. That'll probably go for a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Not too much more. I keep track of these. Um, but yeah, this, this stuff. This this is something I want. I want to see if I can make one of these work. That's a Project Mix I.O. Mm. Haven't found one at a stupid, ridiculous cheap price I'm bidding on one of these because I don't know what it is <laughs> 10 in 10 out Roland no uh, this... Roland used to do a lot of uh, MIDI stuff oh yeah this is an eater roll whatever I, I want to plug it in and see if it's got an ulsa back end or something and a bunch of Motu stuff like all the Motu yeah. stuff I want to get a hold of um this stuff's going to be dirt cheap, if you're patient. Yes. <laughs> so, we're going to build a database of this stuff. We're going to have it. <clears throat> Google Plus was a fun run. Then, it was. Then yeah. Google remembered that it was a thing. They're like, oh, geez, we didn't kill oh, it yet. We forgot oh, to turn that off. Right. All right. Okay. It's it's dead now. <laughs> ah, all is right. Well, sorry. Um, didn't mean to confuse anyone with us not killing a product. Um, yeah. So sad. Then, like, Feedburner is still walking around like a zombie. I'm like, how? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> They kept, you know, threatening to get rid of that, and then it was always, it was still, was there. So, people were nervous about putting anything on it because, because you know, they thought it was going to die, but Google never killed it. Oh, so. don't worry, Stadia, it's, uh, considering its reception, yeah. No, I, I think you're going to get about six years about it, out of Stadia. Stadia's already dead, mind you. But I think you're going to get six <laughs> years out of it uh, until Google's like, okay, fine. Um, it's it's so, going to be a zombie product, much uh -huh. like Feedburner. With, uh, with that <laughs> said, uh, the new darling of uh, cloud gaming, uh, GeForce Now, mm -hmm. the moment that GeForce Now came out, Blizzard said, yeah, our games, they're not on there anymore. And? <laughs> like oh blizzard don't worry honey the world hates you enough you want a sharp here get a fresh shovel there you go that one's getting all the one it's like um so you know the really popular um cloud gaming service that's actually got a lot of people using it and enjoying their time using it mm -hmm. you're pulling your games from it yep what are you doing we're blizzard <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know if that's uh, Bobby Kotick's um, influence and the whole of Activision basically gobbling up Blizzard, but something changed there. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be dealing with, well, I mean, Activision changed. As, I mean, Blizzard used to be cool, brah. Um, that's just that situation. NVIDIA's got an interesting system. They have a Q-based system, so... You know, if you pay them some money dollars, they're like, yo, that's how they're handling the load. And it's like, that, that, look at that, being intelligent. And you pay them $5 a month, and mm -hmm. you can play for six hours nonstop, then you need to log out for however many hours. And, and they have the six. option with a cloud save and an option to download the game. You have to download it each time you play it, but you can still download it. And it's like, baby steps, yeah. baby steps mm -hmm. to rentals. This is what I want to see on Steam. I want to be like, yo, I'd like to rent this game for a week. Yeah. That would be five bucks. You can download it and play it as much as you want all week. Because we clearly have the technology to give you a free weekend of a game. Yes. That can be Just easily Just like we used modified. to do with Netflix. 
um, not Netflix, um, uh, game, uh, uh, the other service that, that was, uh, popular where they'd send you games and then you return them. Gamefly. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I knew a lot of people who were subscribed to that. <laughs> Yeah, game rentals in Portugal were never really a thing. Uh, there were a couple of, like, when the video store concept started to die out, a lot of them sort of shifted to, like, video game stores. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were a couple that offered, it's like, yes, you can rent one of our consoles, and um, you get, I think it was one free game per month, as long as you pay with each um, down payment of the rent you would get a free game. It's like, cool, all right. <laughs> that kind of sounds like uh, Xbox Live Gold Bling and PlayStation Meow. Yes, but for <laughs> the offline consoles. No. <laughs> it's the analog version of that. <laughs> or for people with Nintendo Switches, that's called having access to the cloud safes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, Nintendo. <laughs> Man. Mm. I got some ADAT cables coming. Mm. So it's testing ADAT and spit off is going to be a pain in the. Also, if anybody's got a preamp with ADAT out, I don't care how crappy of a preamp it is. <laughs> I need one for testing. Me and the. Um, one guy who has an art DPS2 on eBay who keeps relisting it for the same price and no one's bought it yet and it's been five months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have one of those too, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think we all do. <laughs> I've sent him messages, but he, he's like, no, somebody's going to pay $150 for it. Like, no one knows that thing exists. Art made that for two minutes. <laughs> the only people who would buy that would be accidentally mm -hmm. they thought it was something else they, they thought they were just getting like an art tps like, they're like arts like we never go look at their website try to find the dps too it does it's not there <laughs> yeah now with this monitor right here uh dude had it for sale for a long time for 300 pounds it's like i'll give you 200 and the like the offer would expire. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, I'll give you 200. Seriously, you're not going to be selling that for 300, 200. And then eBay is like, okay, you, you, that's uh, two, um, two offers you've made. You only get one more. Okay. You know what? You've relisted that thing like three times now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you 200 pounds and one P. <laughs> and he took it. <laughs> sometimes you get into the nego man sometimes i totally got saved because i didn't do my research because i've been looking for that quad i just need quad hdmi at this point to free up space because i have a, i have mm. six pcies and they're full i can't do what i need to do right now and i saw an older first gen xe major well and it's like 200 bucks and it's like yeah, I'm not going to give you 200 bucks for it because Machete don't text and Old Man Vin don't pay retail. It's like, how, how about one-fifth of lowballing doing that strategy? Mm -hmm. And fortunately, they came back and like, how about 180? And it's like, okay. Fortunately, just saw, I went and checked and I was like, no, no <laughs> Linux support for these cards whatsoever. I was like, whew. Dodge that ball. <laughs> because if they would have accepted that, I couldn't have canceled that bid. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, Pipewire. Man, Pipewire is right now, with what we're doing with audio, uh, a little bit of a pipe dream because there's our current audio stack right now. That's Pipewire. a lot of... Uh... Connections. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is over uh, Ethernet, fiber optics, and uh, good old fashioned copper. 
That's what's running the board here at LGC, actually. So Pipe Warriors, Pipe mm. Warriors got to do some catch up. Well, not catch up. It's, it's just got to do some um, work. We have, I've effectively built a broadcast studio, man. I don't play around when I do stuff. So we got full on multi channel mix minus individual strip processing. It's, I, Constructed it where it's infinitely expandable. As long as we have enough CPU to throw behind it. Also, people, quit using your interfaces as sound cards. <laughs> oh, get, had yeah. To, had to get onto somebody yeah. on Twitter this morning. <laughs> because they had the um, YouTuber special, the focus right. Yeah. The red one. The scarlet. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad hardware, but you paid six times too much for it. Um... <laughs> Because focus rights, like man, kids are buying this thing. Let's roll that price up. <laughs> so, and unfortunately, people are buying them. Like I'm using this for a sound card. As Jordan has learned, what happens when you use an interface for a sound card? <laughs> <laughs> it randomly just cocks up and goes sideways on you. Because guess what, Pulse Audio don't know what to do with it. They just don't. So. Mm -hmm. Get a sound card for your sound card. That's the thing. You can get, get like, one of these. Um, Exter external creative yeah. sound cards. <laughs> yeah. This is a USB sound card. XLR out. 60 bucks. And yeah. steel. Home defense. <laughs> yeah. You can throw that at <laughs> someone. <laughs> and I got tons of these things. <laughs> I was going to send Pedro one until I realized it was $120 to send him a $60. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the yeah, day. Yeah, that uh, camera box that Mir sent me was like 70 So. <laughs> I, man, that was uh, when I sent Jill that mm -hmm. C920. I'm like, oh, all right, whatever. It's like 15 bucks UPS to LA. I'm like, all right, that's cool. And do, 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 do this one. It's like 100 Because I, I knew when she looked at me. I was like, uh oh. What? <laughs> you can send yeah. this freight. And it's like hundred. And I was like, nope, that's not happening. Then I went to the um, United States Parcel Service (USPS) and they wanted like one hundred and thirteen. You have that critter. Yeah. Let's get headphone jacks. I don't know what that is. The M track two by two. It's got a forty eight volt switch there. <laughs> well, I saw it as Phantom Power, so Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. So yeah, they're they're selling those it's like, oh, would you like a little podcast to get? Oh, <laughs> I see. <laughs> um, let's see, eighty bucks. Also, it's USB. I mean, this, these are perfectly fine for like PC audio. It's pro audio interfaces. Skipped USB. They went from Fireware to Thunderbolt. And it's uh, looking a lot like USB 4 is going to be Thunderbolt compliant, so... Mm -hmm. We finally Very have cool. another <laughs> universal serial bus again. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, um... It's going to be kind of interesting. It's going to be a very stark, real good comparison because earlier this month, um, PreSonus released their Thunderbolt 3 version of their 28 by 28 interface, which is about 800 bucks. And it's like, okay, that's cool. Because it's an updated version of the Firewire 28 by 28, which I bought for 100. 
Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be doing an AB comparison on that. They didn't do a USB version, by the way. <laughs> you know what? USB 2 towards the end, if you're not doing more than four channels, you can get away with it. You just can't get very tight latencies. All right, I think that's it. Jill, what's going on? You've been quiet. Yeah. Are you trying to read huh. something? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I was just thinking about all the things I have to do for scale. <laughs> Why aren't you doing them? Why are you well, just sitting around doing not doing anything? No, you're not. You're just sitting there being quiet. That's not doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading the chat. <laughs> oh, now you're doing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so the I'm other, assuming the other... none of oh. the people watching uh, has a Steam account uh, going by the name Marsh. Why? No, no, because hang on. Hang got... on. Be more vague. Because I just got a random friend invite and it's like, no one in common, no groups in common, level one Steam oh. account. I just want to be sure this is a bot before I hit the block button. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I've gotten a few of those. <laughs> The bots are yeah. scared of me too. Yeah, I've had quite a, quite a few of them, and then I had one person who was legit and, and and got back to me. I think on Twitter and said, "Oh no, that's me on Steam because I blocked him." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, okay. Well, you had a different name, so." Oh, that'd be neat. It's like, no, no, I, I'm stalking you on Twitter too. That's less creepy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Um. From South Park. Oh, not not to be confused with the not South Park Randy Marsh, right? There's about to be an IRL Randy Marsh. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to creep on people, man, because this like I I straight up like got homeboy's number, like the guy I ordered, well, the guy in charge of the shipping for the music studio that I ordered that at, um, control service. Mm -hmm. I was getting ready to get my call. I was gonna send him a text, <laughs> rattle him a little bit. I'm like, you gonna ship this thing, bro? Uh, you shipped that yet? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to, but take a little. What I'm saying is, be a little more careful putting your public information out online, because <laughs> I that genuinely took two seconds and mm -hmm. in logging into my LinkedIn account. I'm like, there you are. <laughs> yeah, that's mm -hmm. definitely a thing. We can do what I do and just put everything out there. You show up at my house. I'm not the one that's going to have a problem. <laughs> that's not me being a tough guy. I'll, we'll, we'll hug it out. <laughs> no, I think I only scared the one person doing that. Um, someone was trying to troll me on PC Park Picker. Mm -hmm. On mm. one of my builds. And it's like, that seems like a rather unique username. Googled it. Oh, there's your Facebook. Oh, I know where you live. I know your sister's name. Yeah. That's what you That's do. <laughs> then you call them up and invite them over to your house and see if they want to uh, spend the evening playing Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> so I just dropped a couple of names in the uh, reply comment and he went very quiet. <laughs> well, usually the people, uh, you know, the, um, that weirdo who was trying to blow up uh, Joshi. Yeah. <laughs> D9VK and Josh is like, hey, look, here's this guy's Facebook account that's blowing me up. Then <laughs> then they go ballistic. They they go nuclear because like, yeah, nuclear. Yeah. And they, they, they can't handle that. You know, like you, I've been exposed. No, you know, this is what happens when roaches are exposed to light and they scatter. And then all of a sudden, you know, then you get the cry bullies. That's exactly what that dude turned into. You know, he was just like screaming, was making Josh's life. Mm -hmm. And Josh no. is like, yo, you're doing this. And he goes like, I'm the victim here. Yeah. Like, that's uh, what they always come back yeah, with. Yeah. yeah. Cry bullies, man. Yeah. Ten gods. <laughs> what would be a very inconvenient time for you, Pennywise? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that would be fun, Pennywise. I loved when we played CSGO. We'll have to set up another Raspberry Pi or server. No, we we set up a droplet for that. That was it. 
Do, do, do. All right, everyone. I'm going. I really probably need to go to the grocery, but I'm not out of food. Therefore, I will make it until tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how you roll. That's how you adult kids. Yes. <laughs> I, don't... I walk past Tesco's uh, on the way home from work, so Nori just sends me a text, get these things cool. <laughs> I'm ten minutes away. <laughs> from sitting, yeah, the, I, it's beyond lazy, man. It's not like I even get a walk anymore. It's like, I just don't feel like it. Like, I... <laughs> I have some rice or something. I have something. A <laughs> can of something I'll eat. No, I'm not going to eat a small computer. Oh, <laughs> you're making me hungry, Vin. I realize I'm starving. <laughs> look, at, look at you trying to throw me under the bus. <laughs> I'm thinking about snacks like half, 10 minutes into the show. You're like, man. You want guilty yeah. people of making other people hungry? Uh, Shay and Linda. Yes, I know. <laughs> I do that a lot. Damn those <laughs> <Yeah>. two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I still say we need to have a microwaved steak eating competition. As long as I'm not yeah. the one eating it, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. It would be awesome. Because <laughs> steak for me, it's, um, well, if it's just for me, I 30 seconds on one side, flip them over, 30 seconds on the other, done. If it's for Nori, then I have to flip them over a couple of times to get a more thorough cook. Is she like there's medium the, or well there's done? There's the reason yeah. in the relationship you're the one that poops worms. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Not that I, you know, inspect my poop, but uh, I don't. <laughs> Pedro likes cow to table. <laughs> yeah, basically, if I so bite we... into it and it goes moo, it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I think the adage I've... is knock the yeah. horns off of it, ride it through the kitchen, and um, serve it up. <laughs> yeah, cow to table. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. We are going to bounce. And everyone have a fantastic rest of this horrible horrible midweek day hopefully we made it a Aww. little bit brighter for you yay we bet. <laughs> <laughs> if not uh, we'll try again saturday so come check that out oh thank you art theron five dudes and a dudette <laughs> 8 30 <laughs> eastern time and uh <laughs> an hour beforehand pre pre super shows we're going to kick that off yep. in Discord uh, for patrons at any level above 250. Ah, just yeah. things. <laughs> it's going to really. We'll see you then. Bye bye. Ah.